I've done quite a lot of experimentation with creating terrain for this project. What you see here is where I'm at now. In this video, I'm going to have a look at how I got here. Not that I'm implying this is perfect or anything, far from it. It's still very much a work in progress. But let's, let's do, do this, this anyway. anyway. This is some of my early work. The land was a five minute sculpt job in Blender. I created this really basic rover which was just a placeholder model to get me going. I put a jetpack in it early on, just for testing really, as some of the hills are really difficult to get to the top of, which is sort of how I want it. I'm not really planning on having a jetpack in the final game as it just breaks the flow if you can go anywhere you like with no effort from the get go. But for developing and testing, it saves a shit ton of time. Here I'm testing the downhill ability of the rover on the newly created terrain. Yeah, I've fixed this in the current game. It's much more stable now due to the various stabilisation code I put in there. Let's see if I can make it over this ramp. Come on, you can do it. Hey! <laughs> oh. Damn you, physics! Let's have another go. Maybe if I take the ramp going uphill. Maybe that'll work. Here we go. Oh, that's alright. The world is very bare here. Not many things to interact with. A few boxes here and there. It brings back good old memories when life was simple without textures, NPCs, or well, anything really. Nostalgia is not where it used to be. Here you can see a realistic water effect that looks out of place with my extremely simple models. I found this one on GitHub. The project is called Godot Realistic Water. I'll link it in the description below. I did try out some more stylized ones too, but unfortunately I couldn't use any of them. The water mesh has to have a fair amount of vertices for these shaders to work with. Because there's large amounts of C in this game, there are just too many vertices needed to make it work with my little Android phone to cope with. It just kills the frame rate, and this one doesn't work at all with less 2, it just doesn't draw anything. Also, you can see it looks amazing close up, but from far away, the repeating textures look awful. In this game, you have lovely seaside views from the hilltops, so it wouldn't really work anyway. In this version, I'm starting to experiment with using some textures. It looks like I'm struggling to decide if the world's going to be textured or not. Some parts of the map are, some are not, and this bit is a mixture of both. I forgot this version had enemies in it. Alright, go away now. I'm cheating with a jetpack to get to the high level of the mountain. I was thinking it would have some kind of a steep road to get to the top here that you can only get up after your rover reaches a certain level. The map was again created in Blender, but this time I created the grid mesh and blocked out the level just by changing the vertical axes of the vertices. That's why it looks blocky. In my latest map, I used this method to block out the map and then decimate the mesh to reduce the number of vertices, and then sculpted over the top of that to make it look more organic. It's great fun creating these levels in the 3D modeling software and then playing them back in your game five minutes later. You get to play God in your own little world. Here you can see the actual first enemy I created. Yes, it's just a moving box, but you should just be able to make out the white triangle on its head. That shows the direction it's facing. If you come up behind it, it doesn't see you, so it doesn't know you're there until you start attacking it or you come into its field of view. It can't really do anything to you in this version except crash into you and just generally be annoying. I'll just kill him. That's enough of you. There's a little trick I'm using here to make the repeating ground texture look better. I know I'm only using one texture, but if you look at the hill in the distance, you can see the light and dark areas that look a bit like cloud shadow that's on top of the lighting given by the 3D renderer. I got this idea from a Blender Guru tutorial where we used a procedural noise pattern overlaying the repeating texture to break up a bit so it doesn't look quite so obviously repeated. I converted it to Godot Visual Shader and that's what you're looking at here. I was tempted to go for the non-textured look, but in the end I decided that it needed some textures. Because this is a kind of a driving simulator as well as an open world adventure game, the non-textured look doesn't give the feeling of speed and as if you're driving fast over flat land, it looks like almost nothing's moving. When you add textures, suddenly you see the land whizzing past you giving a sense of movement and speed. So that was all fine, but then I found Silence Godot height map plugin. I had a bit of a play with that to evaluate it. What you see here is the result of that. You create the terrain using the tools in the plugin, bypassing Blender. It's really easy to use, you can just paint the terrain how you want it. Similar to sculpting in Blender, you can then paint the terrain with textures. I used some copyright free textures here just to test it and I have to say I was impressed. You can blend textures too. You can have a bit of grass and blend a bit of stone into it so you don't get hard edges. It uses a splat map internally to store this blending of textures. That's a widely used concept in game dev where you use a small RGB image to texture large terrain. Each colour channel is assigned a texture like grass, sand or rock. I did have this weird problem where the collision of the land didn't quite match the visual mesh so the rover in places would sink in more than usual to the land or float above it. I couldn't quite figure it out. This was a while ago so I don't know if they fixed this now or not. Anyway, I thought I'd try this on my phone. What's happened to my frame rate? 5 frames per second? 
Oh look, if you look at the sky, it's okay. So as long as I make the player not look at the ground, it'll be fine. Okay, that was Gless 3. Let's see what it looks like on Gless 2. What's going on here? Where's my terrain gone? It's not there. Oh, it's still there. I just can't see it. I'm driving over it now, but it's invisible. Oh wait, height map plugin doesn't support Gless 2. Balls. Oh well, back to the drawing board. So if you're making a PC game, Xylon's height map plugin may be a good fit for you, but if you're targeting low-end mobiles like I am, I can't see it being of much use. So can I just have a splat map shader by itself? Will that work on Gless 2? With the help of Google, I found a couple of snippets of source code on the internet for a good old splat map implementation. I found one that allowed four textures. Using RGB gives three textures, but this one also used the alpha channel to give you an extra texture. I tried it and it sort of worked. It had a bit of a bug in it where it treated the alpha channel the same as an RGB channel, but the alpha channel doesn't work like that. It's an on-off thing rather than a multiplier. It made the texture assigned to the alpha channel appear washed out in some circumstances. So I fixed that in my version, and I also combined it with a procedural noise shader that I'd made previously to give the illusion of scattered shadows over the land and break up the repeating textures. I used some copyright free textures originally, but then I got some feedback saying that they're too busy and don't suit the low poly style. I agreed with the comment, so I created some new simplified textures in GIMP, which is what I'm using now. The trees and grass are created using particles in Blender. I use the weight painting mode to specify which bits of the land can have particles and which bits don't, and I blend it how I like. I can blend it like Beckham, you know. After my first devlog, I was contacted by someone who suggested I should try a plugin called Godot Spatial Gardener. That appears to have the ability to place trees and grass inside the Godot editor with little effort, rather than importing them from Blender like I've been doing. I haven't actually used it, so I can't say much about it, but if I was doing this again, I would definitely check it out and see what it can do. But for now, I've got all this working without it, so I'm going to let sleeping dogs lie. Here's the water effect I ended up using. There's no complicated shader involved here. It's just a basic spatial material with a normal map for the water ripples and an animation player to animate it. There's no performance issue on mobile with this one, and also, it looks good from a distance or close up. Yes, the close up doesn't look as good as the realistic water shader earlier, but overall, this one's the best I've been able to come up with. I found a YouTube tutorial on creating it, link in the description below. Actually, looking at the new rover, I quite like the old red colour. I thought it was quite charming. Maybe I should change it back. What do you think? Let me know in the comment below. Anyway, that's it for this update. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you and good night.